this way. The little gift. Uh huh. It ain't even Christmas. We already got a gift, horse. Uh huh. Come on, man. It ain't even my birthday. They already giving me a gift. Come this on, man. We got him up right here. Now. We yeah. got him right here, man. Come on, we got him right here. <laughs> Give it up, man. Cordell, the gift booker, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hey. Yeah, welcome to Bridge Business, brother. <laughs> man, come on, man, this, is, this is this is this is like a dream right here for real, man. I can't believe this. Hey, come on, hey, champ, man. Listen, man, you earned it, man. Everything. Listen, I know your life, brother. You you earned you earned your way. Everybody want to talk to you now, man. Uh, I'm Sway. You know, first time official introduction. That's my homie, my partner in crime with Bridge Business. Tell them who you are, horse. Oh, they big horse, Cordell. What's going on, champ? Peace. Look, yeah. I, I, um, I actually had the pleasure of meeting both of y'all at the uh, at the Doomsday event, I believe it was. Oh, um, oh, oh, yeah, at the YouTube I, Studios. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. man. I was in there listening to everybody rhyming and stuff. I, I ain't coming to the spit. I ain't. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> nah, nah. Listen, man. It's you know if you. Mayweather came up on Sway in the morning. He spit uh -huh. a verse. Adrian Boner <laughs> spit a verse. Come on, man. You sure? Oh, man. I'm gonna have to find something. I'm gonna have to write something down. I, I know on, you man. left that. I know you left out of that cipher and inspired. I know you had yeah, wanted yeah. to do some bars. Nah, yeah. A lot of people. I, I, I remember. A lot, you know, I actually stayed in contact with a few of the um, artists who, who got up there that mm -hmm. night, or um, well, that day. And so. Who, so uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh gosh, man. Uh, a lot of, of my boy, my boy who's from Connecticut, uh, Johnny. Okay, uh, Johnny, uh, mm -hmm. Big Red. That's really what I call him. I played basketball with him, Big uh -huh. Red from Connecticut, Stanford. And then um, homie who was out in uh, in Philly, uh, Cortez. Nah, Cortez. That's my well, guy. That's your that's dude, dude, right? But yeah, he, he, you know, of course him. Um, but um, I'm, I'm gonna think of his name. I've been talking to him though too. Uh, Sean Smith. You talking about Sean Smith? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you might be talking about Sean mm -hmm. Smith from Philly rapper. Yeah. Hey, Cordell, man. See, it's good. It's interesting that you like the the rap scene. You know, when we did the Doomsday with Sway in the morning, that's all about the battle. You know what I mean? That's about the mano e mano. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, is can you see similarities in rap battling and boxing? Absolutely. It's it's competition, it's head to head. Nobody's stepping in for you. I mean, you know, the crowd, you feed off the energy of the crowd just like you're doing boxing. But it's really only up to you. You know, once you step through those step through the ropes, so you you enter that battle rap arena, it's up to you to perform now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, hey, it's, hey Cordell, where you from? You from Brooklyn or you from Stanford? Where you where I'm you from from? Stanford? I'm from Stanford, Connecticut. Um the Brooklyn thing happened more so because my family is from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And when I was coming to when I was coming to New York, beating these dudes in New York, <laughs> they were telling me that, like, oh, he's from they were snitching on me, saying, like, yo, he's from <laughs> Connecticut, he's from Connecticut. <laughs> but but when I first came, it was yo, he the soft kid from Connecticut, beat him up. <laughs> and I started, you know, what I mean, turn it up on them, and it was, oh, ah, right, he's from Connecticut. So now I went and got an ID. <laughs> my aunt, everything, so I could fight out there. Oh man, that's dope. And the name, the gift. Where you get that from? The gift, man. The name, the oh, gift, man. Where you get that so from? The, the gift isn't a, isn't a like a conceited thing, or like a self centered type of thing. It really is a, a something that came from. So, make a long story short, I got I got a gun charge, drug charges when I was eighteen. I was gonna go in. I thought I was gonna go in. I ended up started boxing because I needed an outlet to get off the street, start boxing. The judge who judging my court case judge was White. judging the, yeah, Judge White. Yeah, mm -hmm. Judge White was judging the um, judging the Golden Glove bout. And I went in the bathroom, like I was so excited. I won, I was changing. And he walked in the bathroom, started washing his hands. I'm like, Judge White? And he turned <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, who are you? Where I know you from? I was like, you, you, you you judging, judging my court case. <laughs> and he said, oh, and he's walked out. So I thought I messed up, you know? I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, why did I even say anything then? I come back in like a month or two, he gave me pro three years probation, you know? Like he saw that I was doing something mm -hmm. and 
he didn't want he didn't he didn't want to send me to jail and I and then and it came from there just being a gift and so now I will give back to kids who going getting in trouble like me I started my own youth foundation mm-hmm. and um I coach a foundation so I got two foundations that I'm running right now with you what's the name Come of the on. foundations Go to Distance Foundation is my um is my youth program and then Revolution Training is my coach's youth program that I've been running since I was uh nineteen. Mm. So it was a gift that you got in trouble. So when you was eighteen, you was a kid running around and what? Oh, oh. did he freeze? Yeah. Hey, Horace, you you froze up a second. Let's see if we get him back. That's a crazy little still frame too, right? Hey, you can hear us, Horace? I can. I can. Yo, uh, you're frozen though. Oh, wow. We're going to have to get him. Let's see if he come back. Okay, there right. it is. Hey, let's pick it up. Uh, you was bre- you was breaking down. So you eighteen? Oh yeah. So so you eighteen years old. So getting in trouble was like a gift for you. So when you was eighteen, what was it about boxing that made you say, "Hey, man, I want to stay boxing"? Was you frustrated? Was your kid that had a lot of anger built up in you, and it was the only outlet for you? Yeah, you, you hit it right on the head. I mean, that was. You, I mean, you, you basically it sounded like you had some kids, or you yes, you yourself went through it. You know, like just to be able to call it like that. You know what it is? It's like most boxers that you notice that most boxers, they need that outlet. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they have a lot of frustration that built up them. Cause you know, they, you know, we kids, we, we, we men, we young Kings coming up. So being from Connecticut, I don't know what it was about Connecticut. Was Connecticut rough growing up out there in Stanford and all that where you from? To be honest with you, it's, it's Connecticut isn't really like, it's, it's rough in a different way. Like you, you, it's so small. Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't look at it like in New York, North New Jersey or like, Chicago or Detroit or anything like that. But it's so small in Connecticut that like, it's kind of like worse in a sense because you could see people with money mm-hmm. and then your hood would be so little <laughs> and then another person hood would be so, it'd be like four hoods in Stanford, right? And it will be so small that you would just like see a bunch of people just having, having money, having things. So it's like a small impoverished area mm-hmm. in these towns and it kind of hurts you more because you go into school with a bunch of people who got everything. Uh-huh. They, they got they come to school with BMWs and, mm. and you just like, yo, bro, like I don't even I gotta, I gotta walk to school. Like they didn't even send a bus to the east side. So yeah. I used to walk to school every day, you know, and that that was something I just like made me be like, damn, like I'm living in this town and people think it's just like it's just goody goody here, but like I gotta walk to school. Everybody else is driving a car or taking a school bus, but they don't even want to give us, you know, our side of town a school bus. Mm. Mm. Hey, hey, when you was in school, what what made you think you could fight though? Like, did you fight at school? <laughs> would you get your yeah. ass whipped, or were you not? I mean, what was it that made you think? Uh, you could fight? I mean, I got a, I got a few lumpings, you know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. undefeated when it came to yeah. <laughs> you know At least you honest about it, though. At least I, you I honest. wasn't undefeated when it came to the streets, you know? I ain't even gonna lie to you, <laughs> you know? But like, it was something in me that like, I, like, I used to get upset about things and then the only way that I felt like I could handle it was if I had to fight about it, which also kind of was an insecurity from me, to, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. It was more so like, if you made fun of me, I'm gonna fight you so that way people didn't think I was a punk. Even though like, I'll fight the biggest dude like who I know I couldn't beat, but mm-hmm. like, I just had to let him know like, I'm not gonna tolerate that. Cause really deep down, it's an insecurity. You know what I mean? I just mm-hmm. don't want them to pick on me. Mm-hmm. So once they did, it was like, all right, well, we got to fight now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I had to take that a few was, L's too. <laughs> you had to take a few L's, man. I, I love I love the story though, bro, because um I feel like even if some people they get in a position of power, they get in a position of light where you got attention on you and they run from that responsibility of being a role model. But you embraced it. You really embraced it. That's what I appreciate about you. But you wasn't always there. Who was that one person you could give credit to? to help you kind of reach this threshold? Definitely my coach. My coach was uh, a huge part of that. Um, mm-hmm. 
because he did it for, you know, he did it for me. You know, it was like, I, I, I didn't even know what I really wanted to do besides boxing, but I didn't know like how I was going to really get there and, and like what, like what was my plan B or what was going to help me during the time where I couldn't only box, you know, because, you know, you got to start off at the bottom, not make money, be an amateur. And he took me under his wing. He taught me how to do personal training. I went and got my personal training cert, uh, certification. I quit Walgreens. I was working at Walgreens like 60 <laughs> hours a week. Damn. And then still trying to box. And then um, I quit. I just, I quit and I said, I ain't looking back. I'm a, I'm a box. I'm going to be a personal trainer. And then when, when he did all that for me, I said, I'm going to run the youth program now. That was mm-hmm. like, you know, like I saw him doing the youth program and I said, I, I want to do that. What you did for me, I want to do that for kids. Mm. Cause do you do you see any of the kids that you are training at, at your program? Like, do you see yourself in them? Like, hey, man, I was just like you when I walked in this place and I met a person like him and I can see it in your eyes. You're going to be somebody. Do you see that a lot when you with the Yeah, crew? I, I see it a lot. And, and, and it, like I, I try to sometimes not get too attached to the kids because like me, I I don't even care if they're going to be a fighter. I just mm-hmm. want them to do good. And then some of the kids, they like just still want to do like knucklehead stuff, mm-hmm. you know? So it, 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 it bothers me, you know, but I still stay in contact and try to get them to be better, but they men, you know, some of them are men now because mm-hmm. that was 10 years ago when I started. So some of those kids are now, you know, like men, 20, yeah. 24, mm-hmm. you know, so like I can't tell them what to do, but I, you know, so because I'm not that much older, 29. So it's like mm-hmm. kind of like a thing where like I'm kind of too close to the age for them to really respect me fully, but then they respect me because of what I'm doing as far as boxing too, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I noticed, know that that. You, I noticed you talk about the amateurs coming up and all that, and you was boxing in New York and all that. I seen some footage of you and Edgar Belinga, man, and y'all, you know, y'all went at it when y'all were younger, man. Yeah. What was that like, man? We, what was that like in Gleason's gym at that? That was Gleason's gym. That's the mecca of boxing in Brooklyn. Yeah. What was that like, you and Edgar going at that, man? That was big. Egg, um, at that time, Edgar was, he was, yeah, like, he was the, the way he the man, like, on top ranking TV now, he was the man in New York then. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, uh, everybody expected Edgar to beat me um, at that time. But to be honest with you, like, that was, the, like, the that was the chip on my shoulder. Like, everybody who they said had a name, I was like, oh, line them up. Like, mm-hmm. let's, let's, <laughs> let's get it. And um, Edgar, Edgar was nice. Edgar was, he, like, that's that's what people were going to see, too. Like, he, mm-hmm. he better than what, like, just the knockouts. Mm-hmm. Um, but Gleason's every time I fought in Gleason's, I showed out. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was gonna ask you about that energy in Gleason's. What was it about Gleason's? Was that really the doghouse? Or like, was that the doghouse yes. that you need? Gleason's was the doghouse for real because everybody showed up to Gleason's. The whole Brooklyn would come to Gleason's if there was like um, the fights that they wanted to see, like uh, Little B Hop, mm-hmm. um, Earl Newman, myself mm-hmm. was on the card. Everybody was coming to the it was jam packing. It was people who came before us mm-hmm. pulling up to those fights. So we used to get the, the crowd going. Yeah. And I see years later, you got a little bigger and I seen you sparring Sean Porter. And I'm, yeah, like, yeah. Nigga, I'm like, how was that sparring this? I'm like, hey, this guy's sparring prize fighters and all that. How was that sparring these prize fighters? Uh, To be honest with you, like it was a good experience, but it was also kind of whack. Well, know, why was it whack? Uh, you look man. like you was going hard. Look, you look oh, like you was going hard. Wait, I ain't wait, 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 hold up, Porsche. He was on. Why, why was it why? Because, like, I, I don't know if y'all noticed, but, like, I'm a southpaw. I see that. I'm a lefty. So, yeah. Sean called me to come through, right? And I, I, I pulled up to come through. And then when I get there, he like, yo, can you, can you fight me righty? Mm. Oh. But I don't fight righty. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, but why? Like, I'm not gonna be comfortable. He like, oh, well, I'm fighting Keith Thurman, so I need a righty who can mimic Keith Thurman. I'm like, but it's a hundred righties, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> everywhere, like it's only a few southpaws. 
Wow. He was like, well, I just really wanted to work with you. So then I had to work, but then they had all the cameras and the mm -hmm. media. And so after the spar, he started telling me, like teaching me like how to throw a jab. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, why are you acting? Why are you acting like I don't know how to fight? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it was like he was teaching me how to box. I'm like, bro, I, you know I'm a southpaw. Like I'm, I don't, I feel off balance just standing like this, you know. So I, I just thought that was corny that he did that. I didn't say anything to the media that day because it was about him. Yeah, but yeah. I just felt like that was whack. But how, how serious is sparring though? Because it looked like because you know when. When y'all was in there sparring, I was like, man, they seem like they're going a little hard a little bit. Like, you know, y'all flat foot and fighting. You know, I'm like, man, it seems like they're going a little, the head gives turning left and right. I'm like, hold on. It seemed like y'all was going yeah. a little. Well, you know, it's a, for him, for him, it's going to be, he can't get shown up by somebody mm -hmm. who only got four fights. I only had four fights at that time. And for me, it was like, you, you, you picked me to go righty because you knew that you could do whatever you want to me now. So now it made me have a little like, all right, well, I'm gonna try to hit you for real. I want these people to know that I can fight, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to lay some leather on them. <laughs> so I, was, I saw that. <laughs> hey, hey, I was looking at that. I was like, hey, man, what kind of sparring is this right here? Cause you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, is this guy a prize fighter? They like they, you know, <laughs> what if this guy get hurt, you know? So I'm saying, looking at that was great, man. Hey, hey are y'all still cool though, since then? Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say we got no beef. It's just been, it, it was kind of whack what he did in my last fight too. Like he knew I was coming off an Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. I started, I fought a dude who, who just previously fought four weeks ago. I was supposed to fight a guy who had a long layoff. Who like you fought, Sonny, Sonny Daverson, that guy? Sonny, yeah, Sonny Duverson. He had just fought okay. three or four weeks before he fought me. He fought three or four weeks before that. Mm -hmm. So he's fresh and he just came off a camp with Jason Rosario who fought Charlo. So. Mm -hmm. You know, he fresh. I'm coming off of the Achilles tear 17 months out. So I just took the fight because I needed to get back in the game. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yo, the whole commentating was just like. <laughs> it, it felt like it, 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 they was like, against you. They felt like you. Yeah, there. like it was like he didn't. Like if I landed a punch, it was like, oh, Cordell, Cordell needs to put more into the punches. <laughs> like, you know, I make him miss some punches. He's like, oh, Cordell looks like he's getting tired. I'm like, wow. But let me, but let me ask you this, because he, he did land some leather on you, though. I yeah, mean. No, he did. He did. Yeah, he, he got a couple punches in there. And, and then towards the end of the fight, I remember hearing the commentators talk about your stamina, too. Were, but were you a little, like, did, did it surprise you that he was making that kind that contact? And did, did it hurt your stamina? Uh, It didn't surprise me. I knew it was going to be a tough fight, because I didn't. I wasn't uh, in the game for a while. And then mm -hmm. I also didn't have the proper training because that was my first fight in COVID. So I didn't really know how this COVID procedure went. I didn't, I didn't have any sparring. I couldn't leave out the gym. I could only go home because I had to take two COVID tests every um, Tuesday and Thursday. And then when I got there, I had to just be locked down in my room. I didn't work out for for a day and a half, you know. So it was not, now I understand, you know, how to move around. Like I'm out here in Detroit, and I'm getting the best sparring of my life. Mm -hmm. So after after you watched the footage of that fight, what did you? How did you judge your performance after you seen that fight yourself? Because I know you went back and you saw it oh, several times. How did you judge your performance after that fight? I gave myself a C. Okay. It was it was like you know like I I got by. I just got by, you know, and uh, I think a lot of people think like that maybe I don't feel like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I really don't care what the fans really say. I know I, like me, I'm going out in my next fight and I'm I'm looking to prove something to myself, mm -hmm. you know, like I could really bounce back and, and show, you know, and perform the way I should perform. Um, I, I just... I just, I, I really hate the way that I perform. And it's something that's like, I'm internalizing. You know, I'm telling y'all yeah. this for real. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this is my truth. Like, this is something that I think about every time I go spar. Every, uh, you know, I, I got to get back into my moving and grooving and how I do my thing. So um, being out here with Tony Harrison and all these mm -hmm. dogs in Detroit mm -hmm. has brought the best out of me. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, when y'all was training, when you and Tony was training, 
did y'all have like a picture of Charlo on the wall with a <laughs> with face crossed out? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yo, nah. that's a good one. <laughs> nah, ain't that, you don't got nothing like that. <laughs> you don't got nothing like that. Yeah, that would be dope, though. <laughs> yeah. You should get his face I'm, right there. I'm about, to, I'm about to tell him that tomorrow. <laughs> hey, let him know, man. Uh, <laughs> Cause I, that that back and forth between between Tony and, and Jamel, man, that that classic that thing man, is serious, man. man. Those, did y'all talk about like those fights? Said. Yeah, did y'all talk about the fights? Um, we talked about it. Well, we haven't talked about it since like in person. Mm-hmm. Right now, we talking about it a little bit, um, just on, on Instagram and stuff. You know, I got close with Tony through my two fights ago. Um, he commentated one of my fights, and I just. He was just really uh, like informative and just giving me advice. I'm like, wow, like you know, we in the same weight class. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like, yo, listen, man, when I see skills, I don't care. Like you, you nice kid. And so, yeah. so My right, n- right now, what's on your wish list right now? If you can box right now, who's on your wish list? Charlo's the top of that right now on your wish list right now that you want that belt right there. Yeah, I mean, my whole the the goal is Charlo, you know, and. So like I'm fighting Nate Gallimore on um, the 17th under Tony Harrison card, and okay. he's a big puncher. So it's something that's going to show me like, all right, well, this is this is how I got to navigate around guys with who, who with a lot of power who come to fight. Um, he's of course he's not Charlo, but it's like if I could beat him, all right, this, now what's the next step to getting? closer to Charlo or somebody who's similar to that, who could fight like that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to rush myself into fighting Charlo, you know, cause he been pro for a long time. Mm-hmm. But like my my end result is I want to be the champ. You know, I want to beat the best. I want to fight the best and see where I'm at. You know, what I find interesting about you, you, you I mean, you fight at one, what, 154, is it? 154? But mm-hmm. you fought heavier before too, right? Have, yeah, I fought. Um, I fought at one sixty also. At one sixty, mm-hmm. how how low would you be willing to go, or is one fifty four the place that you want to clean up that division? And do you want to go up, or would you challenge like a Earl Spence Jr. or a Terrence Crawford and go down? Uh, I think I can make forty seven, but I would need the proper help mm-hmm. because, like. Um, I'm a little more muscular than those than those guys, but I am the same height as them. Like I'm short for 154, mm-hmm. um, but it kind of helps me in a way too a little bit because I get under the punches and I'm a little, you know, my defense. But yeah, I would. I mean, I would love to fight somebody like Earl Spence, um, Terrence Crawford, yeah, 154, 160, 147. Those are all hot divisions, mm-hmm. you know. And, and Danny Garcia talking about he gonna move up to 154. So yeah. if Danny Garcia need a test, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a good stop right there for you. That's a great that's a great fight right there. You and Danny Garcia, welcome like to 154. That. That's a great, yeah, welcome right. to 154. They Danny. always they always need one of those, like where they're like, Well, this guy's not that good, so we'll give you this guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or like he's kind of new, so maybe I'll be that guy. You never know. You never know what can happen. Hey, since you came in the boxing at 18, who were some of your favorite fighters that you've seen fighting? You patting your skills after, like, far as your style in boxing and being a southpaw well, at that. So my first, um, like, I didn't know a ton about boxing, but so, like, my first, like, I wanted to, like, oh, this is great. Floyd Mayweather was the, mm-hmm. like, I was just, like, amazed by him. Mm-hmm. So Floyd and then Zab, of course, because just, him being a southpaw, uh, the way he fought Floyd until you know he you know Floyd got in his head and and everything you know get Zab has all the like physical gifts, but Floyd had the you know the mental part. Mm-hmm. Um, so Zab was like a huge influence of like the southpaw work. And then when I learned more about boxing, this uh, Pernell Whitaker became my favorite fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marvin Hagler. Mm. Like I look like I like Marvin Hagner and Pernell Whitaker more than both of those guys now. Um, 
But those were my, you know what I'm saying? Those were yeah. the ones I loved when I first started boxing. But then when I learned more about boxing, those are my two favorites, you know? And, and of course, Ali. But those are the two for my Southpaw, like, those are my Southpaw go-tos to look at. You know what I wanted to know as a boxer, when you go in there and you have a game plan for a fighter, right? Like if you go in there with a game plan, like you said, Sean introduced you, told you to come in there and fight him and he walked in there and now you had to go into a, um orthodox stand. How many fights did you have to do? Like you saw a guy that you thought was gonna come forward, you had to box more. How many fights that you had so far did you have to make those adjustments as far as like you thought he was gonna come one way and you just had to use your skill and what you know? Uh, and the pros? Yeah, in the pros right now, so far. Uh, I would say I have 16 fights, so I'm going to say maybe 12 of them. Because, like, mm -hmm. a lot of those fights, a lot of those fights were, like, fights I didn't know who these people were. Mm -hmm. You know, they just had a name, and they sent me a record, and they said, all right, do you want to fight? And I just, me, I just thought, like, okay, well, I won the Nationals, I won the Golden Gloves, I won uh, I went to the Olympic trials, got a bronze. Like I should be able to beat anybody in my weight class who has the same experience as me. Um, so I just kind of took some fights that were like, you know, like uh, I don't really know too much about this guy, but I should be able to beat him because I don't know too much about him, you know. So he didn't do too much in in the, in the amateur. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's been a lot of like a lot of adjustments on the fly when you're in the ring. Just boxing skills, just the science of boxing. You have to know how to box and you have to know how to fight. Because it seemed like you're the type of fighter that look like you'd be like, you know what, I'm going to go in there and take his best shot. If his best shot don't knock me out, I'm going to finish him. Because you you you, you want to get, you get hit. You ain't one of the guys that's, yeah. you ain't one of the guys that go in there and say, oh, the art of boxing is not to get hit. It's like, yo, you go in there and be like, all right, what you got? Because you come, like, I'm I mean, I could do, I could do both, you know, like I, like I adapt to whatever whatever is in front of me, you know. If I if I really gotta sit down and I gotta just chest up and just thug it out, like I can't get away from the punches or the guys just that much on me, then I just gotta sit down, bite down, and and just thug it out. Mm -hmm. But if I got the capability of where I can make this dude miss, like like the fight I had with uh, Lean. Well, Amatoso was good, but the fight mm -hmm. you had with Aleem, too. Let's yeah. start with that one, uh, your sixth fight. You know, yeah. you were showing off your footwork. Mm -hmm. And with Amatoso, <laughs> you just made that dude miss so much. You was, like, yeah. literally dancing in the ring, man. <laughs> like, yeah. And it was like he couldn't hit you. Mm -hmm. Could you see every punch, or you, you was just um, bouncing to a rhythm? To be honest with you, I was like, that was, like, until now, that was my best training camp. Okay. That was my best training. Like, I was sparring. I was sparring. I was doing sparring days, like, 22 rounds, or, like, some days where I was just, like, in the zone where I'm like, yo, coach, don't take me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so I just was – I was really in my bag at that time. That's why I, I tore my Achilles a month after that, and I was just I, – like, I was depressed. I was mm -hmm. crying. I was like, yo, I, I, you know, thinking – Am I gonna be able to come back from this? The doctor's telling me I might not ever be the same. I may not have that spring ever again. So then I kind of went into the Sonny Duverson fight with that, with that whole mentality of like, mm -hmm. you know, am I the same? I, I didn't even train. I ain't spar nobody. I spar my coach. And he ain't really sparring me for real. Like I was questioning myself. Like that's the first time I ever was feeling like. Or, like I felt like a human, you know. You yeah. just got like, can't nobody beat me. You felt like an average fighter. Like fighter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I went into that fight with like my mental just not in the right place, and just like that's why I brought myself here because now I'm just back to like I'm so mm -hmm. I can't wait to fight, and that's how yeah. I always was yeah, before. Like, good. like I'm about to go. If you, you you if you like the Wally Omatosa fight, yeah, uh -huh. I'm bringing that back. That's you bringing that back, <laughs> yo, hey, man, that, that fight right there, like everybody you name it, uh, Pernell Whitaker, Floyd mm -hmm. Mayweather, all these different people that you studied, I can see a little bit of them in that, in that fight. I yeah. can see that in you, your movement, the way you was ducking punches, the way you was rolling your shoulder, you know, moving your head, <laughs> uh -huh. and then the footwork again in the Aleem fight. When I was seeing how you was, you know, moving around him and catching mm -hmm. him at different angles, I was like, damn, this dude done study. Mm -hmm. he really yeah. study. 
Uh, I was a little more green at that time, you know, mm-hmm. at, at the lean fight. So I, I I still watch that fight, and I just be just to go back and look and say, well, I should have did this here, and then I watch the Omotosa fight and say, oh, well, I did that here, so I, mm-hmm. I learned, you know. And but I still always refresh my memory, you know. It, it, it's it's just, it's something that I, I'm a student of the game because I started so late that I like I enjoy going to watch different fighters and measure myself by the by the performance on uh on video. Uh-huh. I, I I heard you say once that uh, you remember going from the amateurs into the pros and then trying on the boxing gloves. And the first time you fought with pro gloves, you couldn't believe what it felt like to hit, feel your knuckle hit somebody head like that. <laughs> And it got you excited. See, I thought you was going to go, wow, I didn't realize I can get hurt if I don't punch right. But you went into, man, it got me excited. And I start thinking maybe Cordell need therapy, man, because this dude like to bring pain. <laughs> you, you said something about pain, man. What is it with your relationship with bringing the pain, man? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny, man. I dealt with therapy too growing up. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. Let me let me um, tell you something, bro. I watch you after your fights, man. I watch uh, uh, some of your interviews. Mm-hmm. I think it was the Amatoso fight afterwards. You just you just burst it out in tears, like of yeah. joy, tears of happiness. And for yeah. me, you know, I grew up in Oakland. You know, I, I grew up around a lot of macho dudes. But the day they learn that crying is okay and how good a good cry can make you feel, they became more well-rounded people. What's that emotion you be feeling at the end of the fight? What be going on in your head? Man, it's like, it's, it's just like, I could have just not been here, you know? Like, my 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 mandatory was like 32. I'm, I'm uh, <clears throat> 29, so I would have still three more years? Wow. You know, and it's like what I what I've been able to do from <clears throat> 18 to 29 right now is just amazing. You know, like it, it's like it's it's undescribable for me. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, like, it's crazy. So like even just sitting here, <laughs> yeah. Come on, oh, man. Briggs business, baby. Briggs business. <laughs> yeah, bring, 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 business. bring that gift, baby. Come on, hey. we bringing that gift. <laughs> hey, so training, training right now, training right now. Since this pandemic and all that, and you're back in the gym, and you in Detroit right now, and you're training. How's it? How, how do you you think it's going to feel when it's no crowd out there again, and you have to go out there? You got to put on your best performance right now in front of the world, and it ain't no real, no real like the crowd that you really like, like a whole arena, like you really like crowded. Uh, it makes it tough. It makes it tough for me because I I am a uh, <clears throat> like. I like to move around and get the crowd to like, ooh, and ah, and, and that give me like my second win. And it made me do a little, it made me pull some things out the bag that I might not have tried that early. Mm. Or, you know, wouldn't have tried if I ain't here to, ooh, then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do that again. Or I'm gonna add an extra punch to that. Mm. You know, so it is kind of, it's kind of boring. It's like, it's kind of like gym atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, but how hard I've been training, it don't even matter to me because when I, I haven't ran a mile in two years, I've been running five and a half miles Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then sprinting two and a half miles Tuesdays and Thursday. I'm in shape. You good. <laughs> Look at him. He's good. <laughs> I like shape. it. I like it, man. Hey, man, what you, I, I guess what I love talking with you, man, I'm dreaming. I feel like I'm inside your dream right now. I feel like you living out a dream. And I'm one of those key players in the dream, me and the horse, are in, you know, inside your dream right now, man. And, and, and your dream right now, and you manifested everything you have today. You you made that decision to go in the gym after that, that ju- Judge White did what he did and gave you that opportunity. You made that decision to go in the gym. That's when you met your coach. And then your coach, you know, gave you this direction and helped put you in on this path that you are right now. Your ultimate dream, man. How soon you think it'd be before you have a, a light middleweight belt? I'm 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 hoping next year. That's 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 really how I feel. Just, oh, the only reason why I say that is because how I've been looking at the uh, 
the welter, the super, you know, the uh, 154 division mm -hmm. is right. If I beat Nate Gallimore, right? <clears throat> he beat Rosario. Everybody is beating everybody, basically. Everybody lost to somebody. So then it leaves me the guy who didn't lose, but isn't at the status of everybody else. Mm -hmm. So now where do you put this guy who's undefeated? Well, let's test him with somebody who maybe was a champ, maybe didn't win the world champion, but, you know, tried to get there and lost. So I think I'm going to get a Terrell Goucher, a Erickson Lubin, mm -hmm. or, you know, s something around there. I'm a, mm -hmm. I feel like that's my next fight after this. Mm -hmm. And that has set me up to be, you know, my next fight to be, all right, well, we need a title eliminator and then, and then a title. So I'm probably like two, three fights away. And it's just like I'm the I'm the uh the underground guy, you know? Mm -hmm. I like it. I, I like to ask I like to ask fighters this question. When you become the champ, are you gonna be parading around with the belt like everybody else? Or are you gonna wanna fight the best fighters that there is to fight right now in that division? I wanna fight the best. Cause because for me, like I do want the belt, don't get me wrong, but I wanna I want to be able to hang my gloves up and say I fought the best and everybody can can say like, okay, Cordell was a credible fighter. Like he didn't, he didn't come out here to just be an entertainer. You know, I know it's about putting, you know, ticket sales and putting people in the seats. But for me, I, I love competition first. You know, I fought 130 fights for free in the amateurs. Mm. Just because dudes said they could beat me. I used to go to tournaments. I was already <laughs> number one. And I would pull up to the tournaments in New York just because dudes said they could beat me. Like, I'll be like, what? All right, so now I'm going to win every tournament. Nobody could win win no tournament this year in New York. <laughs> just because I keep talking about I'm from Connecticut. And I, and I and I really, like, that really bothered me. You know, like, I got a problem with losing. I'm a sore loser. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. I'm a sore loser too. Man. Hey, man, we all hate. Hey. Hey, you know we all need that therapist, man. It's true. None of yeah. us like to lose, man. <laughs> hey, hey, so you, you started mentioning ticket sales, and, and we also, we call this bridge business because we like to talk about the business, too. And it's great to talk to folks before they win a belt because that's when you hear the real struggle. You mm -hmm. hear the real stories, you know. And so what, what is it like for you as a boxer on the rise, you know, just maintaining your business, you know, keep keeping, the, keeping above water? You know, are you living check to check? Or are you okay? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm okay. At one point, I was living check to check though, and and that made it rough because then you sitting there and you like, yo, when I'm fighting, mm -hmm. I took a few like the lean fight. I took that lean fight on three days notice. Mm -hmm. I was twenty pounds overweight, so I lost twenty pounds of water weight in Damn. three days, and that's no lie. Like, I went to I I was point four overweight, point four, and they said mm -hmm. we're not taking the fight. I said. Kiss my ass, I'm going upstairs then. Cause there was no way I'm losing point four. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> I lost every bit I could lose. And I just knew that they was gonna take the fight because it's a TV fight. Why would you turn that down? Mm -hmm. You know, and at that time, I only had made like I probably, for a fight, no lie. This is me being honest with y'all. by that time, I probably only made like two thousand for a fight, twenty five hundred. Wow. They was and they was giving me five for that fight. So I'm like, I, I, I need it. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I need this real quick. So I know he needed too because he he just like me. He only had like four or five fights. Man, he taking that fight. I went upstairs. They called me back. Yo, come down. You already said they'll take the fight. I said I know he would. Yeah, he needed that five. <laughs> but so what? What's changed now? Because you you signed with Al Hammond now, right? Right. Okay. Right. So how has that changed in terms uh, of the business? Do you do you you see a brighter picture ahead of you? Yeah, the life, life life got different after that. Yeah, T talk <laughs> about that. Little, what changes? Got, um, first your pay grade changed. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, you just you feel a little more secure with like uh, his team that's around him because uh, he's very organized, but he's very ghostly. But when he want to talk to you, he going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, oh, you... <laughs> so it's like, it's, 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 it's awkward at times, but it's also so like cool too, you know, like, 
but I, I feel a lot more secure in my career. Um, mm -hmm. And after my Omatoso fight, I got on the phone with him. He assured me, you know, that I'm in the good hands, you know. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. That yeah. that was that was that. Was, I started crying. I started crying. Like, wow. I, I burst out in tears. Like I was like, "No, nah, you lying." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't believe it. I'm like, "What?" I'm talking nah, to the dope. boss. <laughs> yeah, that's dope, man. Hey, man, I, I want to ask you a series of questions, horse. Let's let's, let's do the the bridge business. You know, rapid fire. Yeah, okay, let's do oh, that. Man. Okay, so oh. I'm gonna ask you the first question. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, who are the belt, the best Southpaw boxers of all time? Sweet P, Marvin mm -hmm. Hagler. Uh, I gotta give Terrence Crawford, man. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> okay, just three, he, just three. Ter yeah. Ter Terrence definitely got his, like, I know probably people be like, ah, oh, he didn't, he didn't do enough, but I feel like he did more than enough with the three weight classes. Yeah, man. What? Come on, man. Oh, they, they always hate no Terrence legacy, man. No, I think, I think T Terrence Crawford is going to be. It's going to be one of them things where, and when he gone, people going to be like, "Wow, we we should have gave him his flowers when he was here." Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Right, you want to hit him with the next one, horse? Yeah. Right now, you in the gym? You going hard right now? What's in your playlist right now? What's the top five songs in your playlist right now that the gift get up to? He run his miles, he hit the bag. What's your top five songs right now you listen to an artist? I listen right now. Okay, stuff that's out right now, I don't really rock with like that, to be okay. honest. But okay. so Jay-Z, Blueprint 2, Ooh, okay. H, O, Y, <laughs> yeah. I that song. Um, I listen to Cole. I listen to Cole here and there. But mm -hmm. the, the um that that Drake, what's next? I'm yeah. going, I've been bumping that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That Drake, that goes uh, hard. Been, that goes been, hard. Yeah, I've yeah. been that been nice to run to. Um, I bump uh this. I always play this song uh from J Rock called Win. Win 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 win, 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 win. You know what I mean? That just get me in the. That just get That's me it. in the zone real quick. I play that all the time. It just uh -huh. get me going. Um. Uh, what was that? That was three, four. Uh, that's cool. You got yeah, Drake, J. Yeah. Cole, J. Rock. Yeah, you give us yeah. three. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Hey, yeah. we do something called uh winning Wednesdays on Sway in the morning. That's the theme song, that J Rock song. Win, <laughs> win, win, win. We play it all the time. Okay, let me ask you this, bro. What's your and this is an important question, man. It said a lot about your character, how you answer this one. <laughs> what do you think is the best boxing movie of all time? Oh, that's a that's a tough one right there, I think. But I mean, I, I grew up off the Rockies though. Uh, Rocky. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go with Rocky though. Rocky. It, yeah, I grew up on the Rock. You know what I'm saying? Those are the first things that I well, those are the first things that I see, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't I ain't really, you know, I, I thought Creed was cool, but Rocky was just like what I saw, you know, so I thought. Hey, that's a rough life, yo, but <laughs> he, he thugged it out. <laughs> thug it. <laughs> hey, I like that. When you when you get your championship belt in the fight and you get your you get your 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 prize, you get your prize money and you pay your taxes, what's the first thing you think you're gonna buy? Oh, uh, first thing I you know, I know this is gonna sound probably people gonna think I'm lying. Yo, I wanna just I wanna buy a, a facility. For my youth kids, yo, I'm oh, telling you, man. these kids that I got, yo, they deserve it, man. Oh, like man. they play ball, they back, they they go to school and do their schoolwork. So you know, half of them bad, half of them get sent to me because <laughs> they bad, but they like good kids, like you know what I mean, like, mm -hmm. like I and, and I'm just like, yo, if I when I get a facility for these dudes, like where I could like have them there for hours as opposed to having them there for an hour and a half where I train them, where I can like put computers in front of them and, and, and put some video game systems in there and, and I can have them there. Man. Man. We gonna have something special in the town. They let me get a hold of some wow. money like oh, that. I like that give back, man. I, like I love that, that give back, back man. man. Come I on, love I love that, that give back, back man. That's gonna hey, be different. Hey, Cordell, man. Uh, Man, I, I think at this point, man, I just want to say thank you for being on Bridge Business, brother. This was a great conversation, man. Yes. Uh, 
I feel like we've known each other for a long time now. <laughs> no, I'm, it's, listen, honestly, it's been an honor to be up here. Shit, I got choked up a few times just yeah. being, in, you know, being in y'all presence, you oh, know? Like, man. it's like... Like you, you make me want to, you know, what I mean, rap Poochie Wally Wally right uh, now. Go, 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 kick, kick that first. Come on, man, kick that. Please, when man, it comes to time. sex, let me, let me get a bar. Hey, I'm gonna bring him out to his fight, homie. I'm gonna bring him out to his fight, homie. I'm bringing Uchi Wally. He's coming out to Uchi yeah. Wally. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so serious though, man. Like when when Cortez said that, man, I, I had to hold back tears for real because it's like it's unreal. Seriously, like I'm here. <laughs> you here, bro, and, and yeah. keep it up, man. The way you're doing it is the right way. A lot of us, could, we could get caught up, man, with that fame and fortune could throw folks off. You see it happen around your peer group. But mm -hmm. keep that focus, man. Nobody perfect, I get that, but I love where your focus is at, man. And I think yeah. that's why you could, that's part of why you keep winning, because you're winning outside of the ring. That's, that's right. gonna help you win in the ring, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cordell the gift booker, man. Tell them when your next fight is, the 17th. April 17th on the Tony Harris Sunday card. Just tune in, tune in. All I can say is Nate Gallon, we're gonna bring it, but I I I got the answers. I got Dude, the answers. He got yeah, the answers, is. baby. You heard it here <laughs> on Bridge <laughs> Business. There it is. <laughs>